as it hit the atmosphere at 40,000 kilometers per hour. Its parachute deployed, and the antenna started sending back data. At first, the atmospheric pressure was similar to Earth's, and the temperature was around 30 degrees. But as it descended further into the atmosphere, the readings started to go crazy. One atmosphere quickly became 10, 10 became 20, and the temperature was well over 200 degrees, when suddenly, the space probe cracked open and all communication was lost. The last bit of data it sent back revealed an atmosphere that was 22 times thicker and 250 degrees hotter than Earth. But now that the Soviets knew just how harsh Venus really was, they were even more determined to get there. We modeled these incredible space probes to show you how the Soviets finally managed to land, take pictures, and record audio on the surface of our most dangerous planet. The early space probes had a relatively simple design. The lander was a one meter wide titanium sphere, pressurized inside to around 25 atmospheres. It had a handful of scientific instruments to analyze the atmosphere and a battery to power it during descent. The lander had no thrusters and instead used its own drag and a series of parachutes to bring it down to the ground. But with Venus's thick atmosphere, this turned out to be a problem. Instead of quickly falling through the atmosphere in a matter of minutes, Venera 4 hit the atmosphere like a brick wall and quickly slowed down to just 18 kilometers per hour, much slower than expected. This meant that the spacecraft had to endure 90 minutes inside Venus's atmosphere, constantly being exposed to the heat and pressure until it was crushed. The Soviets realized that once they entered Venus's atmosphere, time was limited, and so they would have to pass through the atmosphere before it had time to crush or melt the lander. 